Hi. Good morning. We are happy you could make it. Welcome to our course entitled Hashtag Echoes of Enlightenment, Baroque Literature. This session at Burke Mountain University's optional school we discuss our 12th literary figure as we embark on a study with Mary Wollstonecraft. Come along with us. 12th literary figure. From, Spitalfields. Great Britain. A study with Mary Wollstonecraft. April 27, 1759 to September 10, 1797. Noticing the masculine trend in Enlightenment philosophers creates a necessity to balance this phenomenon in literature with feminine perspectives. Not that those mentioned previously scattered throughout Western Europe didn't think uniquely, but culminating the zeitgeist of Protestant thought wouldn't be complete without those who would second enlightened position of man as Mary Wollstonecraft had in women. As the first with whom man confides honest contrary thoughts, acceptance of what came to be known as enlightenment was buttressed by, since the advent of the printing press and Francis Bacon's division of literature into history, poetry, and philosophy, Baroque literature distributed throughout Europe. The issue with what's printed is that controversial topics require individual contemplation as what is good for one may not be so for others. The pressure of the Roman Empire through Catholicism on those further from the nucleus of administration was tyrannical where the hubris of the defeated spurred their protest in writing. Removed, men considered equality in others masculine and comparing their piety with that of a pope's they stood in the wilderness just as sovereign. Seeing the wide gap between those Latin and others Waldenshian in 1560, Six Johns, Knox, Winram, Spotswood, Willock, Douglas, and Rowe, produced a 25-chapter confession in statements of faith amicable to followers of John Calvin. Forming the Church of Scotland would re-establish order on those subjects to just another system of masculine dominance that suppresses femininity like Romans had those Latin, Saxons those Anglo or white those black in America. Man is not without women who are included in mankind as man is mind, but, unconventionally feminine, Mary Wollstonecraft saw man as only dominate through education and proved herself an artist in what's been considered as a Baroque literary style. Without women mankind is not complete as man is mind more mental than physical. With everyone in Europe talking about noble this, that and the other shoving aside the point of honor of the noblesse, Wollstonecraft wonders why. People never think about the second man to call for anything other than freedom as the first's price may be more than one prefers to afford. Like I tell students now, education wasn't always free and expected of those younger. People others didn't know could care less if whether they could get by on a little conversational French and a taste for Grey Popon, as the first question from the Republic was Jacobian or Williams, second Girondins, or Jacobian then third, as usual, proving her point man or woman. Arriving a short time before the guillotine of Louis XVI, January 21 of 1793, she was a sad witness, not so much of Maria Antoinette but still nonetheless. France was torn after the French Revolution, and with the majority Jacobin Committee of Public Safety and Political Power who were about to give the order fire at will as it was close to a state of total war. Louis XVI wasn't the only one who was guillotined. As informing Republic's land once the kings is redistributed where in this case only Jacobians received grants for land and property. Allowing no foreigners to leave France this may have been an undocumented genocide where maybe a few women might have survived, but the streets then, now cluttered with bastard sons and a furious Jacobite military in France that lost hold on England in the glorious revolution would not France. The process began with guillotine where around 17,000 had to it been subdued. William in French is Gilliam where the G from Gamma and J from Jove, but that's a topic for another discussion. The issue is G's and J's like C's and K's are phonetically similar but distinguished by linguistic boundaries. Wollstonecraft escaped G's to J's but would find little comfort as Jacobins would turn on Girondins, moderate Jacobins. Who knows what happened to all those other than guillotined who lost their lives after being ushered to the streets and hunted until all those loyal to Louis XVI or even slightly sympathetic to sovereignty through nobility. The Jacobin club in France split amidst the petition against Louis XVI where the Girondins, including Wollstonecraft, became its target. Regarded as a founder of feminist theory, Wollstonecraft represented the will of British women since crafts of the Stone Age remembered upon the mention of her name. Unconventionally feminine, Mary Wollstonecraft saw men as only dominate through education as her partners the formally educated Henry Fuseli and American military trained Gilbert Imlay to whom Fanny Imlay was born. It's not that she wrote a lot, but that she did so well, proving herself an artist of Baroque literature. She didn't just write books explaining her position, but as seldom consider legacies from women, her literary legacy couldn't be represented more in her daughter, Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley. Her daughter would write the popular American classic Frankenstein, as cobblers produce cobblers and tailor the same, she had in Mary the Younger. Her widower published memoir in 1798 that identified her unconventional lifestyle. Her plural relationships brought more attention than her writing would then, but later she'd become revered by women who hadn't married as well as those who had. She wrote thoughts on the education of daughters in 1787 and Mary, a fiction in 1788 which was her first novel. Also, in 1788 she wrote original stories from real life, the only children's book she wrote. After but a year as governess to the Anglo-Irish family of Kingsborough she'd chose a literary career, far from what women of her era called traditional. In her career, other than novels, a travel narrative, a conduct book and other treatises she wrote a history of the French Revolution. A Vindication of the Rights of Women in 1792 is her best-known work. 
Man is not without women who are included as man is mind, but unconventionally feminine Mary Wollstonecraft saw man as only dominate through education and proved herself as equal in Baroque literature. Amidst the ruckus of noble men at arms, she asks what of the noblesse. Distinguished only through education Burke describes the vilest women to Marie Antoinette who asks if by vilest he meant those whose livelihood is from selling vegetables and fish. The meek had inherited the earth then with Wollstonecraft. That concludes all the information we have for you this session. We hope you enjoyed. Coming towards the end of enlightenment marked by the American Revolution next session we tackle a study with Immanuel Kant. We can't wait to see you there. Thank you for your time and consideration.